in this course, we're going to use this method of solving problems. We're going to collect all our information and then we're going to organize it. You know, you have to sort of analyze what you're going to do with the different pieces of information. Frequently, if you're doing a chemistry experiment, you find out that some of the data isn't even going to be used. It's just that you observe everything and then later you might find out, oh, well, that actually wasn't important. So I don't need to include it. Then you finally solve it. And then afterwards, you think about it. What does that mean? Well, first of all, you say, did I do it right? Does this answer make any sense? Did I forget a step? So, you know, just to make sure that your answer makes sense with what was asked. So here is a particular problem. You found a golden colored piece of metal. And you're hoping it's actual gold which has a very high density, it's very heavy, but you're not sure. It could be fool's gold, which has a much lighter density. You see, it's, this is almost four times as massive as fool's gold. You're able to go put the sample on a scale and find out what its mass is. And then this other piece of information, when placed in a graduated cylinder containing a certain amount of water, the water level rises. Oh, that means I can find out what the volume of the object was. Oh, that's good because if you look at density, it's grams per cubic centimeter. So if I know the number of grams and I know how big it is, I should be able to calculate the density. All right, so I've got a plan. Here's my things that I've pulled out of the information. How many grams and then two different water levels. Okay, that's fine. I've collected my stuff. Now I'm gonna start organizing. Well, to organize, I have to have an idea where I'm going. Well, I'm trying to figure out a density. So yeah, what are the units in the answer? Grams and milliliters. What else should I do? Well, I'm not interested in neither the mass nor the volume of the water. I just want to know the mass of my object. Okay, I got that. And then the volume of the object. And so you can see, here's a little graphic that shows before and after you've put the object in the water. So the difference between these two numbers is going to give me the volume. So I go ahead and I make that calculation. That's one step along the way. And I notice, oh, look, I'm down to two sig figs because when I subtracted, I lost a sig fig. At the end, then, I have to remember to round my final answer to two sig figs. Okay, so I'm all set to go. I put those numbers together and I calculate and I've rounded it to two sig figs. And certainly that 19 looks like it's gold, not the fool's gold. So you're comparing that. So now I am happy. I've established that this item I found is actually gold and I'm feeling very pleased with myself. Yes, I should because that is about three ounces of gold. That's a lot of money. Yep, I'm happy. <laughs>